Get the whole story. A very good morning to you. I trust you're having yourself a wonderful Monday, the extension of Jamhuri Day right here in Kenya. It is 9 a.m. in Kenya's capital, Nairobi. Good morning. Welcome to this special broadcast where we are discussing democratic space and civic, civic space. My name is George Maringa and you can join in the discussion uh, at KTNSKE at George Maringa underscore the hashtag to use uh, is democratic space and civic space. I will be introducing you to my guests who are already here in studio and also we shall be joining one of our guests who will be speaking to us virtually right here in studio. I have Daki Galgalo from the Henrik Boll, Henrik Boll Foundation as well as Lucia Ayela, a digital activist. I will also be speaking to Dr. Willy Mutunga, the CJ Emeritus. He will be speaking to us virtually. This is a discussion that you want to stay tuned into as we discuss matters, democratic space and civic space. But before that, I want us to look at Softy, a Kenyan documentary film about activist Boniface Softy Mwangi, who has long fought injustices in his country as an activist. Boniface Softy Mwangi has long fought injustices in his country as a political activist. Now he's taking the next step by running for office in a regional Kenyan election. From the moment Boniface decides to run, telling his wife Njeri in passing with a hesitant laugh, he responds to each challenge with optimism. But running a clean campaign against corrupt opponents become, becomes increasingly harder to combat with idealism alone. And Boniface soon finds that challenging strong political dynasties is putting his family at risk. Should country really come before family as he's always believed? Let's take a preview of the film before we talk about democracy in Kenya. I was born poor, I grew up poor, single mother, seven kids. I want better for my country. A country where everyone has a decent shot in life. Doesn't matter if you're poor, doesn't matter if you're what tribe or what gender, that you matter to this country and this country knows that you exist. Today I come before you for two things. Grateful for keeping me alive even though unajua my day na kutupea Kenya unisha. Asante. Wakini snipe tonight si mnajua ni kwa nini na kufia watu misi okope mimi. Ladies and gentlemen, official speech by mbo mwitu. Wacha vaingozi ya kondo kwanza ndo tumsifu. Sibasi waka mkwachacho atuwe pesa tulitoa kama tax na pasta. And I kiss us, and party had ya so make a verse. And see, see, to go busy with Jinga Nyanya to a club. Mola ni onyeshe, Jia ni supporte. Guide me, bring me home to you. Wangu ni shike, ni shike. Pamoja, Pamoja, walk together. Nana Tasi Mama, Ni ye, ye, Ama ni wewe, Ni wewe, Nana Tasi Mama, Ye, 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 Carry me, carry me, now on the body. Body, oh, yeah, she can hear me, baby. Carry me, carry me, now on the body. Body, focus when you mean the cat or in a soul, in a show. 
Ponta saiko kwa akili niki volontia Chicago Unajua unako toka, unako enda Ama nika kutofa utashingo na kiuno ya nyoka Usinitisha na the same fate Nita kupata mse, mse The modern paper chess, kucheza chess Bill gets away, checkmate Ni about change, he's in my naked truth Ni mezi address Unaitaji kifua sio ile ya gym Ni ile ko within Tu hit the ground sio tu kushare memes Usi feel uko special Hini house of cards Joker na king of hearts Zina diliwa na the same hands Same hands Nana dasi mama Ni ye Ye Ama ni wewe Ni wewe Indeed, that is the official soundtrack of Softy, the film by Boniface Mwangi, Naona Mbali. And that, of course, shapes the discussion I'm about to have with my guests. And I will introduce them. The first one is Daki Galgalo. She is on my uh, close left, and she is a program coordinator for dialogue and civic space at Civic Spaces at Henrik Boll Foundation, which is a Green Party affiliated political foundation. The dialogue and civic spaces program contributes to democratic governance and social cohesion through advanced civic and political spaces and dialogue in East Africa. Joining us on, me, on, the, on my extreme left is Lucia Ayela, the, uh, a digital activist advocating social justice, public accountability and rule of law. She is executive director of the UMA Action TUA, a youth-led and focused organization seeking to boldly and imaginatively catalyze civic agency and leadership among young people. She is also the secretary general of Ukweli Party. Lucia is a bold and courageous Pan-African with a love for reading and podcasting. She believes that activism is a citizenship duty and hopes more Kenyans sign up and advocate for better society that works for all. Later on, we shall be joined by the CJ Emeritus, that is Dr. Willy Mutunga, who was Kenya's 14th Chief Justice since independence and, pres and first president of the Supreme Court of, the, of Kenya under the 2010 Constitution. He served in that capacity from 2011 to 2016, and he has played a pivotal role in the constitution-making processes in Kenya from the 1970s and particularly from the nine, early 1990s. That's just a brief profile of who my guests are this morning. And I will begin with you, uh, Galgalo, because this is uh, a, a matter that, of course, speaks to your heart, and that is civic space. As it, as it stands right now, civic space, has, of course, has changed, yeah. um, as you need from the early the days of uh, fighting for um, independence in Kenya, for multipartism. Where do we stand as a country in matters of civic space? Uh, thank you very much, George. Mm -hmm. um, yes, a lot has changed, and uh, Kenya has become a bit open, and... Uh, the civic spaces is free for many to actually participate. So um, most Kenyans are um, part of organizations, um, civil society organizations, NGOs, and are able to um, participate in, um, ch let's say, changing um, issues such as um, social issues, political issues through uh, protesting and even um, physically or online, uh, like using digital means. Uh, so I think things have really changed since the 1990s when we were trying to fight for multipartism, which we do have now, up to now. But however, uh, we should not forget that civic space is still um, globally uh, shrinking. And this is due to changes in democratic values. Um, 
you, you will see that in most countries, um, even democratic cunt, um, countries are tending towards authoritarianism. Mm -hmm. um, that has a bit affected, of course, uh, the civic spaces that mm -hmm. we have. Mm -hmm. um, talking of Kenya at the moment, uh, yes, we do have, uh, compared to our neighboring countries, um, of open civic space. Uh, mm -hmm. However, there are still some issues when it comes to, for example, people protesting. You will see there is a lot of use um, or force by the police trying to disperse that. So somehow we can say that it's shrinking at the moment mm -hmm. for different reasons. Mm -hmm. And did yeah. you, indeed we'll get to some of the examples because uh, the center of soft film that is Bonfis Wangi has been a victim of such even in the recent, uh, recent past. But uh, Lucia, the voter responsibility because all this couples up to one thing that is uh, participating or exercising the democratic right of voting. Mm -hmm. But also that voting is preceded by uh, registering as a voter and as we are in a space and uh, time where young people in this country are not turning up to vote. But you've taken quite an interesting uh, perspective that is using digital means to try and advocate for all these issues. First of all, as a young person, uh, what do you make of all these voter apathy and less or rather the few numbers of registered voters that you've had in the recent uh, you know, registration by the IBC? Um, thank you, George, for the opportunity to be here this morning um, and for this timely conversation. I believe, um, I'm, first of all, I'm not shocked at um, the poor turnout for voter registration. Why are you not shocked? Um, we take our kids to school. You go to school for basically 12 to 14 years of your life. Nobody mentions importance of voting. You're not even told that voting is your right. There is no civic and political education that's carried out between the ages of, say, 10 and 18. And we expect these people whom we've treated as kids, never given a capacity to do anything civically responsible on their own, to come out of school, fresh out of school, and understand what it means to be a voter and what it means to register as a voter. Keep in mind, IEBC has not conducted any civic education in any capacity whatsoever. So um, assuming I'm coming from Asia, if I was an Asian, and I come into your house, George, and um, you make ugali, and I go like, no, I'm not going to eat that. And I decide to make you my traditional dish, which maybe contains snails. You know, it's, it's not something that you'd jump on at the word go. You'll need someone to talk you through what, what your taste buds should expect, you know? So why is it that we are not applying the same to the new voters that we are expecting to come outside and vote? And then IEBC wants to take this position that, oh, it's just voter apathy. It's, it's uh, bystander apathy. These this young people, we are blamed for something that we have not been taught. We needed to be exposed to it for us to have a point of reference, which wasn't done. And it, indeed, you raise pertinent issues right there because then that uh, brings the conversation of what is the role of a young person then in when all this is happening. Whereas um, they have not been socialized into carrying out or you know seeing what happens, and so and a certain portion perhaps is, is taught in now social studies and history, mm -hmm. but. What does the young person then do when they come out and find themselves they're in the society, they're done with school, and in society you have to participate in elections? Talking from my personal experience, I'm a product of the 844 system, and I'm not even trying to demonize the system. Mm -hmm. It had its advantages. But then everything that I learned in school and everything that I've experienced in the outside world, I like oil and water. There's, there's just no meeting point. It's two parallel lines. And, and you see, um, this becomes a problem because there's lack of mentorship. So there's a generational gap in between generations. And the older generations kind of feel like we young people are irresponsible. Um, I, 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 this is something I hear quite often. We have a short concentration span. Uh, rather than just looking at it like we are really good multitaskers, you know, that's, that's why we have to, um, I mean, segregate our time, yeah, in, in, in so many portions. 
all at once doing so many different things because we are living in a world that has unprecedented, unprecedented challenges. And um, the fact that the older generation is not holding our hands and telling us, you know, we tried this in 1980 and it worked. So find a, a way to customize it in, in the 2021 context. Or we tried this and it didn't work, so don't try it again in 2021. We are getting none of that. So we, it's like restarting the struggle every time. No one has passed the baton to us and, and gone like, here's where we stopped, now pick it up from here and continue. No, we are having to restart all the way from where they started in the 1970s and 1960s, right after independence, and we are now trying to figure our way out. And they're just somewhere seated, folded their hands and looking at us going like, look at those TikTok idiots. <laughs> Indeed. Um, uh -huh. yes. Can I just add Yeah, you? yeah, sure. Yeah, yes. sure. <laughs> So um, I think the question is, what can they do yeah. Yeah, as young people? Mm -hmm. So I think, first of all, um, we should not just blame um, the young people. Mm -hmm. This is also from what they are seeing. Of, we should not forget that we are in an information age, right? Yeah, yeah. So they watch TVs, they are on social medias, where they get all these types of information, seeing their leaders, mm -hmm. what the leaders do. Are they really all good examples to our, 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 our youth mm -hmm. um, or not? Mm -hmm. And then also, since, um, like I said, it's a... We have a lot of information out there, mm -hmm. so young people also can use that and they're smart, mm -hmm. and they can access this um, this this um, in platforms more than, of course, the older generations. So they can use that to gain information and know why actually it's their responsibility to vote, mm -hmm. and do so um, by not just following the populism mm -hmm. notion out there but mm -hmm. really find out who should I vote for mm -hmm. and why should I vote for this person mm -hmm. um, yeah so I think they have that responsibility also to mm -hmm. get information for their of for their own mm -hmm. yeah and we'll get to how relevant and how useful this information is because young people right now they want to see you know the end game of this because for, sometimes the means the end justifies the means and also equally the means justifies the end yeah. but when you look at a civic space uh, you know an issue that is close to your heart uh, we are in a in a generation that um, pocketing uh, rather picketing and uh, demonstrations have taken quite a unique setup if you could call it because right now we are not seeing first of all in the current spaces you've seen right now there is not so much of activism civic space uh, you know it's sort of di uh, diminishing of course due to the political uh, intrigues that have happened in the last few mm -hmm. years so there is a, there appears to be that the elect the, 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 the politicians would be the ones who have been who are who are influencing or shaping the civic space but with their input out either because of political mergers or political interests, then the civic space has shrinked, or rather has shrunk. And, th and therefore, we are seeing that the civilians, that is, who are supposed to occupy that mm. uh, civic space, are not there anymore. I mean, where are we headed? Yes, um, definitely. So shrink, as the civic space is definitely shrinking. And this is for so many reasons. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think if you go on the streets, yeah, like to go and protest for a very important um, purpose, yeah? We, we don't just protest for yeah. any reason, right? Maybe there's um, some environmental injustice and uh, you want to protest for that. Or there's police killings, yeah? And extrajudicial killings and you want to protest uh, why this is happening. Mm -hmm. So when you go on the streets, um, you find there's a lot of, like I already mentioned, mm -hmm. you get tear gassed, yeah. right, uh, by the police. Uh, and in the process, people get hurt, people, people die. And so, first of all, that discourages mm -hmm. uh, many people from going on the streets to protest. Mm -hmm. And also, there are so many other reasons that um, I think protesters are seen as hooligans. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's this notion that these are people who are are jobless, you know, they are idlers, they have nothing to do, and that's why they are just going on the streets on a weekday mm -hmm. to protest. Mm -hmm. So this also like keeps people who are maybe working or they have a job from doing so. Mm -hmm. But then we forget it's actually our right to go and protest for social change, political change, economic, whatever change, yeah, out mm -hmm. there that we want to see happen. Um, so um, there are so many reasons as to why it's shrinking, and if, but also, people have turned to 
digital mm -hmm. protesting, right? Mm -hmm. You can use hashtags and uh, protest on um, Twitter, on any other social media. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, the famous one was Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. and everyone was using that hashtag mm -hmm. and protesting. Yeah. So you can also do that, you know, you don't have to be in the street if you don't have time. Mm -hmm. But um, at the same time, um, the digital space which we also use for protesting, mm -hmm. is also been um, the, the government mm -hmm. that is actually shrinking the civic space is at the same time also using it. And so you are being followed when you are like really um, actively protesting online or even physically, mm -hmm. there is somehow someone restricting your moves mm -hmm. and, or the spaces. Mm -hmm. So um, if we continue this way and if we don't fight for reclaiming that space, we will definitely see a very closed civic space mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as yeah, time goes by. And especially now that we are heading towards election, mm -hmm. this is um, most of the time we find people protest a lot uh -huh. uh, during elections, yeah. Yeah, especially here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And I think it's our right mm -hmm. to protest that is even enshrined in the constitution. Yeah. If we don't push for reclaiming it, definitely we will see a very closed civic space mm -hmm. in some years to come. Yeah. yeah. Lucia, um, uh, in the early years, that is in the 90s, uh, even uh, just about before then, we saw that Kenyans were quite active in this. Even those who were not activists uh, had a role to play and, you know, uh, joined either protesters or did something. But in the current trend, as you are seeing, what is the role of a Kenyan or of, a, of an ordinary Kenyan in trying to support uh, whoever, whoever may want to uh, you know, participate in protests, whoever may want to participate in peaceful demonstrations or even online? What can a Kenyan do ordinarily? Because you are in a space where uh, we've all agreed that things have changed. So what can an ordinary Kenyan do? Um, I am a firm believer in um sharing of information. Knowledge is power. Knowledge comes from information. And I think a lot of us perish for lack of knowledge. Um, the things that matters are the things that we don't uh, pay attention to. And on this point, I would actually want to call out the mainstream media mm -hmm. because <laughs> it's, it's about what you haven't done. Uh -huh. It's not what you've done. Uh -huh. <laughs> because um, we, we get a lot of our social context from mainstream media. So when we have a lot of mainstream media mm -hmm. focusing on relationship and sex mm -hmm. only as the challenges that young people in this country have, mm -hmm. and we forget that fuel prices are actually affecting your ability to or not have that sex, mm -hmm. you know, it's, 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 um, it's quite sad mm -hmm. because I, I can understand that part of our social life, it, as humans, mm -hmm. it's important for us to have um, a social life, mm -hmm. and it's important for us to have relationships because we are social beings mm -hmm. as human beings. Mm -hmm. But then there's other things that also govern our social lives, mm -hmm. and that includes the civic space mm -hmm. and political knowledge. Mm -hmm. And when we don't have our media focusing on these things, then a lot of this information is not getting to a lot of us. Um, there's, there's this quote that will always be said, if you want to hide something from a black man, put it in a book. Mm -hmm. I don't remember my ancestors reading books. Mm -hmm. We are a storytelling culture. We come from a storytelling culture. So verbal talking is, is very, very important. And that is why we have media spaces. Mm -hmm. And um, I, can, I can see that a lot of these conversations are now moving into the digital media space and that is a good thing because the digital media space then allows for interaction between yeah. whoever is hosting the space mm -hmm. and um, the rest of the public. Mm -hmm. So in order for Kenyans to help other than sharing information, mm -hmm. participating in these conversations, mm -hmm. also public participation in public service spaces. Mm -hmm. Like if, if there's um, there's, there's a planning for your budget in your constituency, yeah. it's, it's good for you to attend such things. Mm -hmm. Because we tend to not go, mm -hmm. and you're like, mm, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Public and then, participation. Yes, so things get decided in our absence, absence that yeah. we would have influenced, mm -hmm. but because we were not there, we missed the opportunities. Mm -hmm. And those are not things that affect us immediately. Yeah. It's 10, 20, mm -hmm. 15 years down the line that yeah. we start to feel the pinch mm -hmm. of us not participating 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Indeed, uh, time now for a break, because that's a good point to leave it, because um, after the break, we'll be talking about how we 
something, then you can use social media because you're seeing social media tools such as Twitter coming up with Twitter spaces, and now we can use that to talk about this issue. My guests in studio are still uh, Daki Galgalo from the Henrik Boll Foundation, as well as Lucia Ayela, a digital activist. We shall be continuing with this conversation after the break. Please stay with us. story. If it's under MPSR, it's secure. Make it a part of your loan, be it to a friend, family or client and secure your money. Log on to www.brs.go.ke for detail. MPSR. Hakikishu la ahadi. Democracy embodies responsive and responsible governance, rule of law, human rights, and civic participation. Join us on Monday, 13th December 2021 from 9 a.m. on KTN News as we discuss the gaps between political practice, the constitution, and rule of law, the relevance of civic space in a democratic society, and voters' responsibility, youth apathy, and activism. stories told through an African lens. The dream that binds us together is for us to enjoy shared prosperity. Six to highlight positive and also real stories taking place in the continent and beyond. Every Monday to Friday, we go behind the headlines to bring in news from Africa and other continents. No country will be safe if any other country in the world still has cases of, of COVID. Fry Ginger has ginger oil, which is good for a healthy living lifestyle. It combines wonderfully on salads, stir-fries, when basted on roasted meat or simply sprinkled on your favorite dish. Available in 250 ml, 500 ml and 1 litre. KTN News. Get the whole story. Welcome back to this special broadcast where we are discussing matters, democratic space and civic space with my guest here in studio, Daki Galgalo from the Henrik Ball Foundation, as well as Lucia Ayela, a digital activist. And before we went for that break, uh, we were talking about the space of um, social media. And it's a question I'll throw it to both of you because uh, civic space and 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 uh, and election that is the participation of young people comes at a time when the world of course has uh, moved into social media and at the same time there were risks because you saw in the US there was the um, input or the influence from social media sites that is such as Facebook there was that whole controversy then as a young person how do you creatively uh, use social media to advocate whereas there be uh, to, there, whereas there are those challenges like in uganda where there is even you know switching off of the internet uh, in kenya sometimes also there has been such instances uh, wh how do you then express yourself and be democratic in or rather be civil in a democratic way as well as ensuring that you advocate for what you want and I'll start with you, Gal Gala. Thank you. Um, thank you, George. Yes, um, it's good that you brought up about internet shutdowns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this also happened a lot because now government have realized people have 
moved to a digital space mm -hmm. when, of course, the other physical space is mm -hmm. not there or restricted. Mm -hmm. um, so, of course, it's a very good opportunity for young people to now use digital space. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go anywhere, you know, at mm -hmm. just the comfort of your home or wherever you are. Um, um, however, I think you should know also how to use the digital space. Um, there's, of course, a lot of information out there, even on the digital space. It could be, you know, false information in which people share a lot um, on this, uh, on Facebook, on Twitter, and all over. So I think you should know um, also what kind of language to use when you're on this digital space. Um, it's important to be civil when you're fighting for a good cause, right? So um, I think language is very important and how you use it and how you use the space in, in using this space. So um, I think if you are able to write and if you know what that common interest you're fighting for, follow, um, you, can, you can use, of course, the hashtags and use good messages um, that are passing on in relevant information mm -hmm. in that area. Um, and then, you, you know, you don't like give up, you keep on doing that over and over and at some point the policy makers, maybe the decision makers that you want to see that um, information and act on it might be able to see it and act on it and maybe you get enough followers also if it's something that is actually affecting many people mm -hmm. or even just a few but with a lot of voice. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I will say good language, be civil and be um, persistent mm -hmm. on sharing your message and passing it on. Yeah. Yeah. Lucia, we are in a generation, of course, uh, as, as a digital uh, activist, mm -hmm. of course there is trends, there is hashtags, uh, there is so much that goes on and creates a discourse online. And we've seen some you know, tools like Twitter Spaces coming up on Twitter. But to be honest, mm -hmm. there is little, if, if you have to be honest with each other, the spaces that we've seen coming up, especially of young people, are not quite pretty much related. Even if they are, they are very few related to matters democracy, governance, and election, and participating and coming out to vote. How then, um, as young people, are we saying that we want to have this discussion, but when you go online, that's not pretty much the discussion you're having. And even if we do, how do you move that discussion from uh, virtual or online to physical and people coming out to, uh, you know, to participate in voting or changing the, the governance of a country? Uh, uh -huh. So digital spaces are a tool, mm -hmm. and um, a very good tool um, at that. I have gotten responses from government parastatal because of Twitter, just yeah. making noise on Twitter basically. Mm -hmm. um, and you can tell that when pressure is applied, sometimes you get results. Mm -hmm. um, however, I think personally, this, this would be my challenge, when um, Betting companies want 80-year-olds to bet. They make sure that the advert they use is an advert that an 80-year-old can understand mm -hmm. easily because you'll find 80-year-olds betting. They've even committed suicide because of losing bets, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, wherever there's, there's, there's uh, politicians running campaigns, they campaign with um, very, very understandable language, like what Akamonge Lugayamta. If, if a politician comes to your hood, they come to, to speak the language you speak. That's yes. why Utawana Wakikula Maindi Choma, things that they don't ordinarily do. They'll, they'll sit in a kibandaski with you and have giveri in avocado, you know, because it's, it, it looks cool to do that. However, um, and this is where I think as civil society organizations we fail, when we want to pass civic information, we don't simplify it. Mm -hmm. So I'll come here and I'll tell you, Article 1 of the Constitution of Kenya 20, 2010 says, all sovereign power belongs to the people of Kenya. Mm -hmm. But if I go to tell that to my mama Mboga, chances are she'll likely not understand. But if I were to sit there with her and go like, you know the way they say God is the supreme power, like the most high, that is what the Constitution is. That way, maybe that's a language that they'd, they'd understand, or maybe that's a language that will be relatable to a Christian community, mm -hmm. but it, it's going to be relatable to a certain group. Mm -hmm. So the way we message civic information is um, totally lacking. There's a lot of legal jargon. There's a lot of big English words. Mm -hmm. I, I love listening to PLO, but then the problem is that I have to keep a dictionary with me all the time. But and, isn't that an opportunity for you to learn? <laughs> 
Fine, it's an opportunity for me to learn new English words, mm -hmm. but is that the priority right now? Uh -huh. is, is the priority me learning new English words, or is the priority me learning my basic civic uh -huh. rights and responsibilities? Mm -hmm. There's something that's called communication. Mm -hmm. What PLO does is talking. He yeah. addresses, he mm -hmm. does not communicate, because mm -hmm. communication needs understanding from both parties. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, we won't get much into that topic, but then Galgalo, um, moving on now from civic space, to participating in an election or you know vying because we've seen Boniface is eyeing an elective post yeah. and of course he's using quite a unique way of doing things that is uh, digital uh, strategy is what he's using mostly um, about the merits and the merits of it all you may not know he may perhaps be the one who knows how whether it's working for him yeah. or not but then in an era where very few people like um, uh, like Boniface are coming out to seek elective posts in this generation, in this environment, in this context that we are in. How then do you uh, encourage more and more young people to come out and you know vie for these positions? Because uh, globally, the youngest per, uh, you know elected person we've seen so far is only the Prime Minister of Finland, and she is a woman. Uh, but then, of course, that's in a different society altogether. In Africa, we are still seeing those are uh, the boomers. They are still you know the ones occupying spaces, elective posts, even appointed positions. So how then do you encourage more and more young people to come out? Because they are like okay. Fine. If I go and study, say engineering, become an engineer, I'll even make more money. Uh, you know, because young people just want to, you know, have a good life. Yes, that's very true. Mm -hmm. um, but also at the same time, young people are trying actually mm -hmm. to vie for uh, this post. Mm -hmm. But you see, the way our election is. Um, or if you want to vie for, let's say, an elective position, yeah, yeah. you have to have money. You have to be rich, right? For you to actually give people handouts for them to vote for you, which is actually very wrong, right? Um, so that's why we should understand, first of all, why am I voting for this person? Is it because he gave me um, handouts or she gave me handouts? Or is it because this person is going to represent me um, in, in parliament, right, if it's um, an MP, is this person going to represent me? And I think what we lack maybe, and that's why we vote the way we vote, um, is the knowledge, right? What, what is the role of an MP? Yeah, what, what are they supposed to do? What's the role of a senator and what's the role of a governor? Why am I voting for these people, right? What are they going to do for me? Um, me as an individual, us as a community or a society, right? So I think um, knowledge is power, like um, Lucia said. So I think um, we should do a lot of civic education. First, to understand the roles and responsibilities of people we are electing into the offices. And then from there, I think it will be very clear as to why I should vote for this person and not this person, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think knowledge, that's what I'll say. So young people need to gain a lot of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to wait for actually people to give you that knowledge. Mm -hmm. that we, we are, like I said, in an information age. You can get the knowledge. Like, you can just have to Google, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. And they are all, all of these young people are using lots of smartphones, mm -hmm. internet, and they know how to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Just Googling. The role of these people and why you want to vote for a certain um, person mm -hmm. so and that's why also Boniface Mwangi when he was campaigning mm -hmm. he was actually using also a different strategy physically yeah. not giving people handouts because he said I don't have that money mm -hmm. but I'm going to represent you in Parliament if you vote for me mm -hmm. but then you will hear people saying no um, you know if you're not giving us handouts, we won't mm -hmm. vote for you mm -hmm. we we'd rather vote for someone who gives us. so I think there is lack of knowledge a big gap in how we vote in our country mm -hmm. and I think that has to change but also you mentioned I think an example of the youngest person in Finland mm -hmm. but we did have an MP who was very young John Paul yeah yeah I, I meant president that's what I meant oh president uh, yeah, okay the, the but, of yeah. Our country, yeah exactly so mm -hmm. I think sometimes you have from to be Gembe south in Meru yeah. exactly yeah. from yes. Meru mm -hmm. um, and he didn't have money, money yeah. right mm -hmm. he didn't have money he was just on his bicycle going around and um, asking for people to vote for him mm -hmm. and you know it just mm -hmm. I think sometimes it's of course the will also um, and what you are willing to uh, do for your people mm -hmm. and pe if you are really um, honest people will see through that mm -hmm. yeah and they might vote for you but of course we have to change how we first of all campaign here in Kenya and mm -hmm. giving handouts that has to stop because mm -hmm. so 
Mm-hmm. It's just not right. Exactly. You yeah. want to add something, Ms. So, uh, yeah, I want to agree with her. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we basically are the people who employ the politicians. Mm-hmm. So when they come to give us these handouts, it's, it's what's going on in all the other government um, sectors. When you have to get a job, you give someone a bribe. So the politicians are coming to bribe us so that we can give them a job. Mm-hmm. And then they go and don't do that job. Mm-hmm. And then despite, because we were bribed, we, we now don't um, feel confident enough to even demand accountability from them. Uh-huh. Because as one politician once upon a time once said, ni pesa yangu ilinieka kwa ikiti, si kura zenyu. So you see there's, there's that disconnect. Basically and, bot. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you see the problem is that um, our political parties don't run on political ideologies. Mm -hmm. We haven't had a political party that produced a presidential candidate in one election and survived to produce a a president in the next election. Mm -hmm. Even if it's the same president, Mm -hmm. it's always a different political party. Mm -hmm. So you know, our political parties are basically not standing for anything, so they fall for everything. Mm -hmm. And once we get to a place where we understand ideology, we can then better be placed to even demand accountability from our leaders Mm -hmm. because if in 1973 um, our grandparents were promised tapped water and in 2021 you're still promising us tapped water Mm -hmm. you know it's 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 a whole Mm -hmm. (laughs) generation Mm -hmm. two generations actually in between that are still waiting for for tapped water despite us Mm -hmm. celebrating independence for Mm -hmm. over 50 years and we have nothing to show for it Mm -hmm. another thing we need to stop recycling politicians. Manze ni kama nguo tumeiva, tumeifua, imeraruka, tumeipiga kiraka, hadi imechoka. <laughs> just let it go. We need to let them go. The whole bunch of them, we need to let, just let them go. If they were not able to do anything in, in the 10, 20, 15, 30 years that they've been in power, mm-hmm. trust me, they're not on their road to Damascus moment. They're not going to start doing things now. Mm-hmm. It's a lie. Mm-hmm. Let me, be, let me play the devil's advocate here. Mm-hmm. Because a young person right now, um, we have had COVID for quite a while. And, well, digital uh, you know, activism and campaign is also a tool. Yeah. But say I'm just in the house and I'm following conversations online and I'm you know, contributing. Then just outside my apartment, my, you know, the place where I live in, my estate or, you know, Mutani Konyanaishi, there comes a politician and... Here, I hear that this person is giving people 100 shillings, 200 shillings, even a thousand bob. You, your guess is as good as mine where the young person could run to. Yeah. Why, how then do you, not resisting the urge, but how do you then, you're able to identify that this is not good for you? This, because again, you're fighting, um, you know, the, the, the digital activism, as I've said, uh, is fighting the wave of the old tradition that we've been used to. So, and that may not be as easy uh, because this is pretty much put, trying to put new wine into new wine skins. Mm-hmm. But we've been doing uh, new wine in old wine skins. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, digital spaces are good, mm-hmm. but there has never been a revolution on in the digital space. Mm-hmm. At some point, we have to bring it out of the digital space. Yeah. I believe the digital spaces are good for advocating and passing information and amplifying voices. Yeah. Um, having said that, if me say by the politician I could jump down and appear na do, me touch kuwa because I need to feed. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be able to understand the constitution if I'm hungry. It's, <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know, but unfortunately, that's where the system has us. Our system of governance has put, at a, has put us in a place where we are constantly thinking about survival. We don't have a time to think about any other thing in our lives. So, atam tuwa kujanza kuambia pastor ya katiba, you're thinking, fair, kuenda job, kesho na tuwa wapi, like, what are we going to eat for supper? Do I have money for lunch? Am I, you know, we, all those things are concerning you so much, so it's like, your constitution in Ezangoja, mm-hmm. we need to survive. <laughs> yeah. So, fine, if you mm-hmm. need to survive, mm-hmm. bro, manze chukwa yodo, ataka mani chwani, mm-hmm. so, so, mbili, you take that money. But when you go to vote, mm-hmm. please, don't use your stomach to vote. Mm-hmm. <laughs> use your brain to vote. Yeah. Ule mse mwenye unona meuza sera vzuri, that is the person you vote for. Mm-hmm. Mr. Kata, there, there, there was, um, 
an illustrative cartoon that I saw the other day and it was this guy in a house and he had hanged t-shirts from all political parties. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there was a, a political party that was coming and he just picked a t-shirt and puts it on and tells the wife, weka majia ugali. Mm -hmm. No, because he knows he's going to get money Amen. from the rally. Mm -hmm. So you have all those t-shirts, mm -hmm. attend all of those rallies, mm -hmm. take all of those handouts, but when it comes to voting, mm -hmm. please vote in someone who's rooted in ideology mm -hmm. and someone that you can hold accountable and someone who has a performance track record. Yeah. I usually say it's, it's very easy for us to sit and go like, now let's elect the, the, the Chama treasurer. Mm -hmm. A lot of us are in Chamas, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. We trust that person so much so that we are willing to give them our money. Mm -hmm. And you know how much money Chamas yes. make. Yeah. So it is the same concept that we need to start applying when we are looking for a leader. Because yeah. this is the person who's going to be making decisions mm -hmm. that are going to be affecting not only us, but generations mm. to come. Yeah, and we are getting into the home stretch of this conversation because of time. And Daki, I want to I want us to look at the broader perspective moving forward. Um, because this is a, I want it to be the closing remarks for both of you. Mm -hmm. But starting with you, Daki, um, how do you expand the uh, protect and expand at the same time the civic space moving forward? Because we are we're just a few months away from the uh, election. Uh, political undertones as it stands right now we miss a day in politics is such a long time oh, yeah. so so much may happen between now and the election sure. how do you expand and protect the civic space yes um so can i just comment? Yeah, yeah, sure. mm -hmm. <laughs> uh yeah on the question you asked if, about the handouts mm -hmm. right so i think first of all we have to to know that this is it's a short-term thing, yeah. right? And it's not even going... The, the money you're given mm -hmm. doesn't even change your life. Mm -hmm. If anything, maybe it's a lunch for that day yeah, and yeah. then it's over. Mm -hmm. So we should think long-term mm -hmm. as Kenyans, mm -hmm. yeah? Even as, as young people. You're going to vote this person in for the next five years. Mm -hmm. um, so that money you are given... Okay, you took it, so, mm -hmm. but you're going to the ballot. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be there. You know, mm -hmm. it's your secret. Mm -hmm. You don't have to vote for that people, mm -hmm. that person, if you don't want to vote that for that person. Mm -hmm. If he's, he, he or she is not the right person, yes. right? You can take it, but think long term. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's my that's advice. It. Yes, and and then you asked um, how to protect and broaden um, the civic space. So there are many ways. First of all, I think people should exercise their civic duty, right? Even as a young person, exercise it. Go and get registered, yeah, and vote and vote wisely. Um, like I said, you can get all the information you want to. Mm -hmm. You know, like research on this person, mm -hmm. um, or if the person is coming from your, you know, your your community, talk to older people who know the person. You know, mm -hmm. get to know more about the person. Is this person worthy of mm -hmm. my vote? Mm -hmm. uh, which is your right, mm -hmm. and you should vote as a young person. Mm -hmm. um, so voting yeah. Yeah. and then uh, being able to like join networks mm -hmm. you know that are fighting for your interest yeah. you know if there's a common interest you're mm -hmm. seeing there join that um, network that mm -hmm. um, NGO uh, that civic organization, civic organization yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah we are pressed for time so yeah. allow me to just give Lucia a, a chance uh, very briefly in 30 seconds to just you know your closing remarks and now to expand the digital space um, so advocate for digital mm -hmm. rights mm -hmm. and basically digital rights are your basic human rights mm -hmm. in the online space. Mm -hmm. If I cannot slap you mm -hmm. like right here, right now, I shouldn't be able to violate you any other way in mm -hmm. your digital space. So advocate for digital rights, mm -hmm. um, especially bullying. Mm -hmm. if, if you know you bully people, just, just stop mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. because it causes division among us. And I can tell you division is the reason why a lot of young people are, are not achieving much yeah. Yeah. per se because we are a majority of um, the population. Mm -hmm. Two, I want to agree with her, join a network. Mm -hmm. There is something that young people in Dandora are doing and they did it in the previous election for their MCA aspirants. They sat down with them and they were like, we are the young people in this uh, hood. We know the problems that we have, so we want to vet you. Mm -hmm. and, and they did that, and I think the MCAs are doing quite well in, in the region. Mm -hmm. So vet your leaders. Ask mm -hmm. questions, mm -hmm. speak out, make, yeah. make sure your voice is heard. Indeed. Just speak out. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be given unto us. 
we have to agitate and fight for it. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have to be violent, but we really, really have to make our voices heard yeah. so that they can know we are here and we are ready to, to, to fill in the gaps. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and what a way to wind up this conversation on democratic space and civic space. I've been speaking to Gdaki Galgalo from Henrik Ball Foundation. Uh, she has been here in studio as well as Lucia Ayela, a digital activist, and you've listened to their input on how to expand, protect and defend the democratic and space and civic space. We had hoped to speak to uh, the CJ Emeritus, Dr. William Tunga, but we apologize for that. We shall be continuing with this conversation. Of course, it doesn't stop here. Uh, you can continue the conversation online, but that's why we end up this edition of this live